Beneath New York's Verrazano Narrows Bridge is a military fort from another time. This is Fort Wadsworth, a site that, until its closure in 1994, was the longest continually garrisoned military installation in the US. From its early history as a Dutch blockhouse in 1655, to its fictional reputation as the location where comic book character G.I. Joe's elite unit operated, this fort housed some of America's most crucial untold secrets, and today we uncover them all. So join me as we discover the history of Fort Wadsworth. I'm your host Ryan Sokash and you're watching It's History. The area where Fort Wadsworth is located in New York has a rich history that predates the fort's construction. Before European settlement, the area was inhabited by various Native American tribes, including the Lenape. The Lenape tribe was in the region for thousands of years, relying on the area's natural resources for sustenance. They hunted fish and gathered food from the surrounding waters, forests, and fields. The specific archaeological details of the prehistoric period in this exact location are not extensively documented. Still, evidence of early Native American settlements have been found throughout Staten Island. The first known use of the land for military purposes was in 1655 as the site of a blockhouse built by a Dutch settler on Signal Hill. These days, the site is known as Fort Tompkins, which is within the greater complex of Fort Wadsworth. In places like this, you can really feel the essence of civilizations from another time. Still, if you'd like to enhance that notion, you should check out the sponsor of this video, Rise of Kingdoms and the Upcoming Civilization of Greece. Rise of Kingdoms is an epic cross-platform strategy game available both on mobile and PC, taking players on an immersive journey through various historical eras. With an expansive open-world environment, players can explore and conquer new lands. With more than 60 million users, this top global community has seen over 100 million downloads worldwide. In Rise of Kingdom, you can choose from 14 historical civilizations that have truly existed. Famous generals and unique military units from different civilizations will obey your every command as you build your own legends on the battlefield. There will also be a civilization clash for players to fight for their own civilization. You can participate in this event to win amazing prizes, including an Apple Vision Pro or a PS5. Benefit from real-time battles that anyone can join or group together in team battles to take the action to a whole other level in a seamless world map. Rise of Kingdom will welcome the arrival of the new Greece civilization, featuring exclusive commanders and special units, Agro Speedies, adding a new level of excitement to the game. So download Rise of Kingdoms now by clicking the first link in the description, pinned comment, or by just scanning the QR code. Remember to use the promo code Greece 4 rok so that new players will receive 20 silver key. Participate in the new event by clicking the second link to fight for your civilizations and win an Apple Vision Pro and other special prizes. Thank you for supporting our sponsor and the channel. Now, back to Fort Wadsworth. The first blockhouse, built in 1663, survived at least throughout 1808. In fact, during the American Revolution, the area became known as Flagstaff Fort. It was captured by the British in 1776 and remained in British hands until the end of the war in 1783. This is when the fort saw its first major physical expansion. The investment made sense as this was a key point of controlling America's most important commerce path. The commanding position overlooking the Narrows was critical for the British defense of New York Harbor. They reinforced the fort's defenses, armed it with cannons, and used it to prevent American naval forces from easily entering or leaving the area. Fort Wadsworth was a fantastic observational post to monitor American troop movements and activities in the region. They had a clear vantage point from the fort's elevated position to gather intelligence and plan their military strategies helping them to control and maintain communication lines between Staten Island and other British-controlled areas, including Manhattan. Thanks to this advantage, they could coordinate their military operations effectively and suppress any potential rebellion or uprising in the region. 
Ultimately, the British occupation of Fort Wadsworth played a part in their overall control of New York City and its surroundings during the American Revolution. However, American forces would later make strategic gains and retake control of the fort and the region. As the Revolutionary War progressed, the tide turned in favor of the American forces. In 1783, the British evacuated and withdrew their troops from New York City, including Staten Island, where Fort Wadsworth was. The British withdrawal was part of the peace negotiations and terms outlined in the Treaty of Paris signed in 1783. Following the British evacuation, American forces moved in to occupy and take control of Fort Wadsworth. The fort came under the jurisdiction of the newly established United States and American troops replaced the British garrison. Fort Wadsworth underwent further expansion and modifications as the United States recognized the strategic importance of defending New York Harbor. Over the years, the fort was modernized, reinforced, and expanded to serve its defensive purposes better. This paid off during the War of 1812 as Fort Wadsworth played a role in the coastal deterrent and ultimately did not see any direct combat. A bit later that same century, the Civil War broke out and Fort Wadsworth played a relatively minor role compared to other forts and battlefields of the war. However, it still served important functions during this period, such as coastal defense as a part of the larger system of fortifications known as the Harbor Defense of New York. And perhaps more importantly, Fort Wadsworth was used as a recruitment and training center for Union forces during the Civil War. It served as a place where recruits were enlisted, trained, and prepared for military service. In fact, by 1863, the post's numbers rose to 1,400 men, and the fort reached its highest number of soldiers by the following February at 1,941 enlisted men. At this point, Fort Wadsworth was given its name to honor Brevet Major General James Wadsworth, who was mortally wounded at the Battle of the Wilderness during the Civil War. By the time the First World War came around, it was clear to most that Fort Wadsworth was an important deterrent, but it was unlikely to see combat, and it was for this reason that the fort was the perfect location for counterintelligence measures. During World War I, intelligence gathering methods were less advanced than today. However, various techniques and sources were employed to gather information. There was human intelligence, gathering information through direct human interaction. This could include spies and informants who operated in enemy territory, gathering intelligence through personal observation, conversations, or infiltrating enemy organizations. Spies and undercover agents played a significant role in these operations, providing valuable information about the enemy's plans, troop movements, and other strategic details. Captured enemy soldiers and prisoners of war were also interrogated to gather intelligence. Skilled interrogators would question POWs to extract information about enemy plans, troop strengths, supply lines, and other valuable details. This information helped build a broader intelligence picture and aid in strategic decision making. Perhaps more high tech was signals intelligence, which involved intercepting and decoding enemy communications. Radio intercept stations were set up strategically to capture enemy radio transmissions, telegraph messages, and other forms of electric communication. Skilled personnel would analyze and intercept signals, decipher codes, and extract intelligence from the information obtained. This often went hand in hand with imagery intelligence, the secret art of gathering intelligence from visual imagery, including aerial photographs. For this, reconnaissance aircraft were used to capture photographs of enemy positions, troop movements, and fortifications. These photographs were carefully analyzed to extract intelligence about the enemy's strength, defensive positions, and vulnerabilities. Finally, there was open source intelligence, which gathered information from publicly available sources, such as newspapers, magazines, and official publications. Analysts would scour these sources for information on troop movements, war strategies, political developments, and other relevant details that could provide insight into enemy intentions and capabilities. All the same, considering the secrecy around this part of war in general, we may never know the full extent of just how much Fort Wadsworth contributed to intelligence, but most sources agree 
that it was substantial. During World War II, Fort Wadsworth continued with its usual and well-established military roles, but the fort also expanded into other preventative areas, such as air defense with anti-aircraft batteries, anti-submarine operations, and mines with depth charges, and civil defense in support of air raid drills, blackout procedures, and other procedures aimed at protecting civilian infrastructure. During blackout periods, all exterior lights in cities and towns were required to be turned off. This included streetlights, storefront signs, and illuminated advertisements. Interior lights in homes, businesses, and public buildings were also dimmed or covered to prevent any light from escaping and being visible outside. To prevent light from escaping buildings, blackout curtains or shades were used to cover windows. These curtains were made of heavy, light-absorbing fabric that effectively blocked any light inside of the building from being visible outside. The curtains were often required to be thick enough to prevent even the smallest amount of light from escaping. These measures also applied to vehicles. Vehicles were equipped with blackout lights, which were smaller and dimmer than regular headlights. These lights were angled downward and shielded to limit their visibility and prevent them from being seen from the air. Beyond that, street markers and signs were often painted with light-absorbing black paint or covered to make them less visible at night. This helped reduce the chances of enemy aircraft being able to identify specific locations or landmarks from above. Civil defense wardens were appointed to enforce blackout procedures and monitor compliance. They patrolled the streets, ensuring that lights were properly extinguished reporting any violations. Violators could be fined for not complying with blackout regulations. The amount of the fine would depend on the jurisdiction and the severity of the violation. Repeat offenders or those who consistently disregarded blackout regulations could face legal action or worse. This may have meant being taken to court and potentially facing more severe penalties, such as imprisonment. In some cases, individuals who violated blackout regulations could be publicly shamed or criticized for endangering the safety of their community. When local newspapers or public announcements published the names of the offenders, aiming to discourage others from disregarding blackout procedures. By the war's end, Fort Wadsworth would find itself in the headlines, not because of any military significance per se, but because it stood in the path of the proposed Verrazano's Narrows Bridge. Historically, the Narrows were a vulnerability for the United States. Still, it also created a massive physical gap between two key population centers that might otherwise create unimagined economic growth when more directly united. Hence, it was in the city's interest to unite the two sides. However, to do so would also mean diminishing the fort's sight lines and overall position. A bridge across the Narrows had been proposed as early as 1926 when structural engineer David B. Steinman brought up the possibility of such a crossing. At the time, Staten Island was isolated from the rest of New York City, and its only direct connection to the city's other four boroughs was by the Staten Island Ferry to the South Ferry in Manhattan or by ferries to 39th and 69th Streets in Brooklyn. In 1928, the Chambers of Commerce in Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, and Staten Island announced that the Interboro Bridge Company had proposed the future construction of the Liberty Bridge to the United States Department of War. But it wouldn't be until 1955 that the United States Congress, under the administration of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, authorized this project. The construction of the bridge required coordination with multiple agencies and considerations for its impact on the surrounding areas, including Fort Wadsworth. And this was the moment that unequivocally led to the eventual downfall of the fort. With decades of diminished military importance, the stronghold was transferred from the United States Army to the National Park Service in 1972. It became part of the Gateway National Recreation Area a unit of the national park system, the focus shifted from military operations to preserving the fort's historical significance and providing recreational opportunities for visitors. The fort's structures and grounds were preserved and maintained as historical assets. 
Efforts were made to protect and showcase the fort's architectural features, including its batteries, barracks, and other military structures. Interpretive signage and exhibits were installed to educate visitors about the fort's history and role. Overall, the construction of the Verrazano's Narrows Bridge prompted a shift in the status and function of Fort Wadsworth, transforming it from an active military installation to a preserved historical site within a recreational area. However, well into the 1990s, the army maintained control over certain parts within the fort, including the Coast Guard's Regional Exam Center, Army Reserve Units, and administrative offices. Fort Wadsworth provided housing for military personnel and their families stationed in the area. It also housed various military support facilities, including administrative offices, mess halls, and recreational facilities for military personnel. The fort continued to be used for military training and exercises. For example, the Army conducted training programs and drills at Fort Wadsworth to prepare soldiers for their respective roles and deployments. These activities contributed to maintaining the readiness and effectiveness of military units. The U.S. military officially decommissioned Fort Wadsworth on September the 30th, 1994, marking the end of its active military status and the transfer of full control to the National Park Service. After its decommissioning, Fort Wadsworth became part of the Gateway National Recreation Area, a unit of the National Park System. Since then, it's been preserved as a historic site and recreational area, open to the public for exploration and enjoyment. And that'll do it for today's episode. Special thanks to our sponsor, Rise of Kingdoms and the upcoming Civilization of Greece. Make sure to support them by clicking the link in the description. And until next time, this is Ryan Sokash, signing off.